A concept that I'm relatively sure you're going to see as a free response question is functions defined as integrals. We've seen this before in Fundamental Theorem Part 2, but I want to point some things out that in this context I want to make sure that you get kind of clear before you take off and try to do these kinds of problems. So if we are given a function, big F of X, and it is defined to be an integral, this is truly the accumulation function, okay? We're accumulating area in the plane trapped in between the function little f and the horizontal axis starting at some constant value a and stopping wherever they tell us to. So this is truly the accumulation function. So if we're given a function defined to be an integral, we understand from Fundamental Theorem Part 2 that the derivative of that function is just the integrant function. Now this plays a role and we'll see what role that plays. I have an example where that shows up. So it plays a role as to whether it is x or whether it's some function in x. But we are in this context, in the context of the accumulation function, there are some things that I want you to know about how we're going to answer some of these questions. So we need to know the following properties. This is usually part A or part of part A. They give you a function defined as an integral and then they ask you to evaluate that function at whatever value they gave you as the lower limit. They'll ask you for f of A. Remember we have a property of a definite integral that we, when we are integrating from A up to A we are assured that that area accumulates to zero because frankly we don't have area. We don't even have any width, right? We only have height, whatever the output is at A. So they're going to ask you that probably in part A. Remember the relationships as well where your integrand function, and normally by the way they give you a graph, they'll give you a graph of f of x. So you're looking at a graph of f prime. All right, so here I'm calling f of x, I'm calling it this f of t function. So where the outputs on this function are positive, because this is the derivative function, then the function defined as an integral will be increasing there, right? Because of this relationship, because the derivative of that function defined to be an integral is going to be the graph of the function that they give you. And because of this relationship where the derivative is positive, the function, big F, would be increasing. Where the derivative function is negative, the original function is decreasing. Where the graph or derivative function equals zero, you have a stationary point, right? A critical point. It could also be where it is undefined. You would have a singular point, still a critical point where this function, where the derivative function is increasing, that means that the second derivative function is positive, so the original function is concave up, and again, where that function is decreasing, second derivative is negative, so the original function would be concave down. These are all relationships that we know, but I just want to point out to you, in a function defined as an integral, this is the derivative function. Normally they're going to give you the graph of that. We'll see some examples. So these are the relationships that you're looking for. The, where the outputs are positive on your graph, big F is increasing. Where the outputs are negative on your graph, big F is decreasing, and so on. Don't forget that if that upper limit is anything other than x, that you've got a chain rule thing going on here when you start talking about f big F prime. All right, and again, I have an example where we can go through all that. So here is the first of two examples we're going to do in this set of videos. The graph of a differentiable function f on the closed interval 1 to 7 is shown. So here is the graph of f. This is the graph of f of x, little f of x. And h of x, little h of x, which would be akin to our big F of x that we had in our prior slide, is defined to be the area accumulating in the plane starting at x equal 1 and stopping at whatever x value they tell me, accumulating between this function and the horizontal axis over this interval. 
all right? And since that upper limit is just x, the domain of f also happens to be the same domain for h because x is to f as x is to h. So the domain for h of x is the same. It's the closed interval from 1 to 7. They're asking you to find h of 1. h of x is defined to be this integral. We have a function defined as an integral, right? They give it to you. So show them that you understand what h of 1 is. It is the area accumulated starting at 1 and stopping where they tell you to. This is for where x equals 1, right? So I'm substituting 1 in here for x. So see how this is that first property that I showed you on the prior slide? And so when we accumulate from 1 to 1 or from a to a, that accumulates to 0. Now let me tell you, if you just show them h1 equals 0, you're not going to get process points. You have to prove to them that you know why it's 0. This is justifying your answer of 0. This is a bald answer. So be very careful that you show them all the steps involved. Now they want h prime of 4, so let's write the definition for h up here again. It was 1 up to x of f of t dt, and we're looking at the graph of little f, right? All right, they want h prime of 4, so here's what I want that work to look like. Show the AP reader that you understand how to get and what h prime of x is. Okay, at least once on part A, part B, part C, part D, wherever they ask for the derivative first, show them that you understand because the burden of showing them you understand what's going on is on you. It's not on them to see the right answer and say, oh, well, this student must have known what they were doing. No, the burden is for you to prove to them that you know that this is the relationship between H and F. You only have to show them that once. If part C asks for the derivative, you don't have to show them that again. But somewhere on there, there's going to be a point attached to this work right here, showing that you understand fundamental theorem part two. That's what this is testing. So once you do that, then show them very simply that you understand h prime of 4 is simply f of 4. Here's the function f, so we need the output on this function at x equal 4, and that is 2. So these are not very time-consuming problems, and they're not very complicated problems, but you do have to know the relationships. And the burden here, what students struggle with most, is what do I have to show in order to get the points? You have to show all those relationships. All right, so make sure that on the homework that you, that you copy or practice or emulate what I'm showing here because that's going to be sure and get you all the points on a free response problem. So again, I'm going to come up here and write the definition for h, the accumulated area from 1 up to x of f of t dt, same problem, same function. Here's the graph of f of x, which is h prime. On what interval or intervals is the graph of h concave upward? Justify your answer. Well, we can tell them that we understand h of x is concave up when h double prime of x is positive. And since h prime of x equals f of x. We don't have to show them why we know that. We already showed it in part b. Since h prime of, prime of x is f of x, then we're going to show them that we understand h prime, h double prime of x, is then f prime of x. And, or so, or hence, h of x is concave up, and you can show the intervals. We're looking for where f prime, or you could even show them, on f prime of x is positive. So we're looking for positive slopes on this function. This isn't f prime, this is f. So positive slopes happen from 1 to 3, and that occurs on the intervals from 1 
to 3. Is there any other interval where f is increasing or, or the slopes are positive? Well, it happens here between 6 and 7 as well. So I justified that the slopes were positive. You could justify that f of x is increasing. Same thing. Where f prime is positive, f is increasing. It doesn't matter as long as you show that you know these relationships and that either here, positive slopes, or here, function increasing is your justification and then the right intervals. All right, so that's a pretty straightforward, pretty clear free response question or problem on a function defined as an integral. They could also ask you more things on a function defined as an integral. Here they're asking us max min information, right? So again, this is f of x or h prime. Find the value of x, so it wants the x coordinate at which h has its maximum. That's absolute or global max is what it's asking for. The highest high on the interval from 1 to 7, we have to justify our answer. So we can say that we know that h of x has a local max at x equal 5 because h prime of x which equals f of x changes sign from positive to negative. Okay, so there's a critical point. We also need to check endpoints. So really all we would have to do is we would have to show them h of 1, we would have to show them h of 5, and then we could show them h of 7, and the highest high is going to be the absolute or global max, right? Well, remember from part A, we found h of 1 already, so we don't have to show that work again. We do have to show the work that we understand that h of 5 is the area accumulated in the plane from 1 to 5. We have grid marks here, right? So we could, each one of those is one unit. There's 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. We could say that's roughly 6. We might say that's roughly 7. And this is a little bit smaller than 8. So I, we could call that really anything close to 8. I'm going to say it is approximately 8. I mean, I can get close to that just counting the grid marks there. And so I want them to see that I understand that h of 7 is the area accumulated in the plane from 1 up to 7. Now, we already have a positive 8 from 1 up to 5, so I would just add this or subtract, I guess I would say, these negative values. And I think that's, I don't know, I, I would probably be safe calling that something a little over 1. But it doesn't matter even if I call it one or, you know, three halves, anything like that. Let's say, let's call it three halves. All right. So uh, this is roughly, and I guess I should say roughly, right? See, 16, something around 13 halves, which is clearly smaller than eight. So I would say the max on the interval occurs at x equal 5. And I've done everything to justify my answer here because I have compared all of the candidates. You could also do this verbally if you wanted to. You could tell them that number one from part A, we know h of 1 is 0, that there's positive area accumulating, accumulating up to x equal 5, and then there's negative area after that, so h of 5 must be greater than h of 7. But make sure that you clearly communicate with them why you know that the max happens at x equal 5. So we'll stop the video here. We'll pick up in the next video, and we'll continue on with our examples of functions defined by integrals.